Welcome back to the Truckings Podcast. Today is a new episode about power steering issues with razors that have dynamic suspensions. Regardless if it's the older version or the new version, stick around to the end. We're going to give you some important information. Uh, as always, please show your support by hitting the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to turn on notifications. All right, power steering issues with dynamics. Have you ever experienced anything like that? So I haven't experienced it going completely out. Um, I've, I think everybody's had where you leave the key on and then the power sink thing comes on. Um, what I have had is um, where it's almost like it, it pulsates. So you're turning and it, it's not just a smooth turn. It's a little more difficult to turn it, but it just, it, it's like it's Oh, like while it you're driving. While I'm driving, oh, okay. yeah. And I'm, I'm a little concerned because I've, I've already had the issue with the turbo on mine, yeah. but I've, I've read a few times where it's been an issue on the Pro XPs where it just goes out. So I'm already out of warranty. It's, at oh, this yeah. point, it's just a let's ride and see what happens kind yeah. of situation. Um, but I have not had it just go out, but I, it, it's not flawless. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> so we have a Turbo S that we call Rowdy. It's Dynamics version one. Uh, and then we have a Pro R we call Angry, it's Dynamics version two. And so uh, on Rowdy, we bought the five year warranty. Thank God. Like, I just, I don't know why I did it. I'm not a big warranty person, uh, but I did it. I did not buy it on Angry, and I'm kind of kicking myself now after I've learned this information. Uh, we'll start back when I first started learning about this issue. I brought it in for some minor warranty stuff. Things I could have done, it was like a carry bearing, but they didn't know if it was something in the front diff too. And where I just, we had a lot of other stuff to get filmed. So I'm like, I'll just take it up to them, let them figure it out. It's a place that I trust, right? It's the only dealership I've ever went to that I trust. Uh, the, Polaris doesn't send them out information. Like, hey, if you do this, this is what's gonna happen. Right. <clears throat> now they got manuals and stuff like that. I understand that part of it, but uh, they never experienced this before, but they had to take off my front diff to get the drive shaft out to change out the carrier bearing, which I've done that before, right? Not a big deal. Yeah, and they, but the, in the process, they had to unbolt the rack and pinion right. and unplug the power steering. Okay. Still not a big deal. We've all done that before. A big deal comes when they start putting it all back together. They drive it. Nothing erratic shows up. We go to Stony Lonesome. <clears throat> At Stony Lonesome, I start getting these errors on ride command. It's the triangle <laughs> with the little ex ex exclamation mark in it. And I'm like, man, I just had this thing in the shop. Before that, it ran flawless. You know, I brought it in because it was a ticking sound, and that's what led to the, you know, it's fine and it was a carry bearing. Um, ticking sound not from the motor. Let's be clear about that. It was okay, like ticking sound there. from like the front diff. Okay carry bearing area and so we go on that trip it messes with ride command a few times we later find out after bringing it back to the shop and them diagnosing it is when you unplug and unbolt the rack and pinion you have to recalibrate the dynamic system it does it doesn't matter if you line it up perfectly and you go back into the same grooves you know after looking out there because they thought it was a ride command that was malfunctioning they looked at all sorts of stuff and that's when it clicked. When you disconnect your <clears throat> your steering box and your power steering, because you got to remember the dynamics is is all wrapped up in that, right? Because right. when you steer, it compensates. Right. Yeah. And so when if they don't <clears throat> recalibrate it, the issue was the system thought I was turning and at a slope at all times, and it started when I turned the key on my my dynamics would go down at different intervals. Trying to compensate for the Exactly, slope. yeah. And so, went back, um, 
once they figured that out, they recalibrated everything, and apparently that's not an easy process either. Uh, and you gotta to recalibrate. You've got to have the player software and all that stuff. But right. just the steps they go through to recalibrate it. And I've calibrated a drone, so I can imagine that's got to be a headache. It's right. a headache every time we got to calibrate yeah. a drone. So uh, <clears throat> I can't imagine having to calibrate that. So that's the one, you know, FYI. If you have any type of issue that you got to pull off and unplug the power steering is, you know, I don't even know what a dealership charges for that. I asked them, but then it's like, oh, it's just part of the process because we had to do it on something else uh, and, you know, just didn't think about it and didn't follow through with it. But so that's something to think about to consider. Uh, second thing, power steering related, own Rowdy. And, and I don't know if what happened the first time led to the power steering going out because you got to think about it, the whole time the power steering thinks it's fighting itself. Right. And I didn't feel it. Like for me, it felt normal driving. There was no, you know, resistance. No There's no back or anything like that. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, we go to West Virginia, <clears throat> ride the entire week there. We unload, come back, uh, literally crank it up the next weekend to take, a, you know, some friends on the back trail. Uh, and then all of a sudden, the steering won't. I mean, it's pulling hard one way. It's like a little midget hanging on the side, just like, oh, you know, it's like the tension's <laughs> always going left. Uh, I later find out if you jack your wheels up, you've got them straight, and you turn your key on, and it turns all the way one way, your power steering's going out. Hmm. Or is out, or is an is is issue. Uh, the power steering box and setup from Polaris, over two grand. That does not include the labor. I think it was like, 3,200 labor and everything included. So your, the warranty you really didn't think you needed? The warranty covered, covered it. it. It did cover it. Okay. The reason why I said at first, I don't know why I bought the warranty, because I later find out the warranty does not cover the dynamic shocks. The whole reason why I bought it. It does not cover the GPS unit, the ride command. Gotcha. It covers dash clusters, but if you say, hey, my GPS, my ride command is not, is not acting right, it does not cover that. So that was frustrating to learn that. We learned that real time because I, throughout all that process, they didn't know what was wrong. Polaris ended up uh, warning the ride command by itself. They did, and okay. I think they did that because they, they wanted it back at their place to diagnose it and figure out what's going on, right? right. For R&D. I think that's why I did it. They don't do shit out of the the goodness of their heart, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you seem like a good guy. I'll yeah, just cover that. Yeah, part. yeah, yeah. I think it was such a unique situation, but it was like a tumbleweed of things that happened, you right. know? Yeah. Uh, later find out it was a power steering that didn't recalibrate, so I got a new ride command out of the deal. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, so that's just some, this is all just information. I thought about doing an educational video about this, but it's just so many things that happened that led us down this road to figure all this out that, and I didn't have any footage of them changing it out. Right. When I had the power steering issue, I didn't take good footage of the wheels turning. So just, I figured the podcast was probably the better platform where we can just make it an open discussion. Uh, and if you're having power steering issues, <clears throat> here's the things I would check. You know, first thing, lift your front tires off the ground, <clears throat> turn your key on. If it cuts all the way one way, boom, it is your power steering. It's, it just is what it is. It is that. Um, if you do that and your wheels don't cut all the way around, but your icon, your triangle with the exclamation mark comes on, and it didn't come on and stay on. It would come on and then go off. It would come on okay. and then go off. So it wasn't like consistent. If that's happening, then someone has unplugged your power steering. Right. Either you did it by accident or you got a cut wire and it's a bad connection. Yeah. Um, but something has happened to that power steering to cause the dynamics not to work properly. <clears throat> um, there was no indicator in the steering. This is why I'm trying to make sure I communicate clearly. The icon coming on, the icon coming on, there was no feedback in the steering wheel when that was happening. And that's the one that's done lonesome. So it hadn't Correct. gone out yet. That was just because it wasn't. I've never experienced what you're saying. Yeah. The, the 
The pulsating, yeah. The pulsating. Now they say that is normal at start. You turn a key on, it kind of pulsates. They said that is normal. I've seen that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about driving it at slower speeds yeah. and it's just not smooth. Yeah, <clears throat> I never experienced that. So uh, if you are dealing with power steering issues, this is just some things to keep in mind. Uh, you know, when, when it had gone out, when you got back here and it had gone out, could, you could still drive it, but you were fighting it the whole time? The whole time. Okay. Thank so God it didn't happen in West Virginia because my right. wife was driving it. I mean, it, it would have stared off the damn mountain. Like it was. So you're actively fighting it. Oh, no, yeah. It's not like you're just kind the of. The moment you let go, you're going left. Hmm. I mean, I would, I would drive because I was trying to figure out what was wrong. I would just kind of <laughs> let my hands off, like open them up. I mean, it's cut. Like someone just jerked the wheel out of your hand. Like it was, it was a unique feeling I never felt before. And I've had power steering on every side by side I've owned. Mm -hmm. uh, and hmm. so I just. That bad deal if it goes out at speed. You know, yeah. that doesn't seem like a, a good way for it to, to go out. No, no. Now I've had it go out on that uh, old Razor 800 I had. Uh, it would go out while you're driving it sometimes. It would just be tough. Yeah. That's all. But now I don't know what is causing it to pull right. on the new machines. And it might only be a unique thing to happen on, on the Turbo S. I don't know. Now, keep in mind, Turbo S is four years old. Right. And, and, and that mistake happened with them not recalibrating it. So this might not even be an issue for anybody, but what I hate for someone to do, buy an aftermarket power steering, and then they can't recalibrate their dynamics. Like, I'm just saying, it's something you need to yeah, consider. Research it first. Yeah. Research before you start just pulling stuff off and replacing yourself, because if this wouldn't have happened to me, like, I, if the power steering went out and I knew it was that, I would have replaced it myself and then I would have been in a shit storm of trying to figure out why it's not working, yeah. Why now am I got this I, this uh, error message on my ride command? Right. Why won't it go off? You know what I'm saying? So, um, and the that, and it was on the dash cluster too, the little triangle with the exclamation mark. Right. That was on both of them. Uh, so, <clears throat> just something to think about it. Uh, I hope this is helpful for whoever else. If you're watching this, you probably got power. Oh shit! Yeah, you probably searched for power steering <laughs> issues or something. <laughs> but no, this is like when when I had my turbo issue. There was nothing. Yeah. A lot of people had the same code. Nobody had the same problem. Yeah. And so they get um, the problem fixed, and then they're like, "Whew, my problem's fixed. I'm going." They got them out. out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but mine. And it, we don't want to do that. We want to be able to. Yeah. Explain our situation. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then and mine was a unique situation, and this is probably something that is a unique situation to the Turbo S. Yeah. So maybe it helps somebody. <clears throat> but the, the dynamics, the recalibrating, recalibrating dynamics is across all machines. So it's just not on the Turbo S. So from what the dealership, we've had thorough conversations about this. You never want to be that guy when they're learning something, but I was that yeah. guy. Yeah. And then I'm knowledgeable <clears throat> somewhat to an extent. So, I'm getting them to ask more detailed questions, and it's just unfortunate. Like that's how they made these systems, and I'm I'm interested to see. I wonder if all of them are like that because Honda has a Smart Shock technology, yeah. the KRX has it, Live Valve, and uh, the Smart Shocks on the Can Am X3. Yeah. So if if this is not just a private Polaris <coughs> re related deal. If your ECU is controlling or has impact on your shocks, then I would assume it all has to be recalibrated, especially if it has to do with your steering. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah, that'd be interesting to know because that's that's a lot of machines that Shit, we, think you'd, we think it would be more widely known if that was the case. Yeah, yeah. And so <clears throat> good information for y'all to have. Hopefully this has helped you in, in one way or another. Uh, if you have any additional questions, drop, drop a comment below. Um, if I don't know it, hell, I'll even call our dealership, ask them, because <laughs> uh, I want to know it, right? Like, oh, yeah. it helps me to figure that kind of stuff out, especially if we can help out someone in the riding community. So, again, thank you for watching our podcast. Until next time, stay safe on the trails.